eager to talk about tonight's thriller, but um, we do think it's important as somebody who loves the game of basketball uh, and has followed it my whole life to uh, to send our condolences to the Indiana University basketball program and Coach Knight's family uh, on his passing. Obviously, a, I mean more than a giant in the game, uh, and certainly for a young coach, somebody who's I don't know if I model his style at all, but I admire his success and his track record of making his guys better and his ability to hold guys at a high standard all the time. Uh, so much respect to, to him and obviously our, our thoughts are with them as they mourn. Um, you know, for tonight's game, obviously the score is one thing. The way we played is, is certainly something I'm more proud of. Um, but we played the way we trained. That's not always the case. Uh, we shared the ball extremely well. We guarded pretty well connected for the most part. Uh, but there's certainly some areas we need to get better at. That's why I'll focus the turn as we start to prepare for Monday. Did you ever meet Bob or get a conference or anything out of your friends? Nah, one of my, uh, you know, I don't regret much. Um, <clears throat> I live life forward as much as possible, but certain people I wish I would have had an opportunity at some point to cross paths with. Um, he's one of those I did never had the opportunity to. Were you curious about anything going into tonight and how did whatever you were curious about play out? Um, you know, I'm always curious to, you know, we talk about it, right? What What's happened for the last five weeks? Does it, does it, does it really work? You know, we think it does and sometimes you don't really know in practice because the guys know what's coming and they try to make sure it doesn't work because they don't want to look bad. Um, and while this wasn't Houston or Texas Tech, with all due respect, right, there were some things out there that, that I do think will continue to translate uh, and will get better as guys get more comfortable uh, with each other uh, and within their roles for the team and then certainly as we get more whole. Bryce is an experienced guy, but it, it seemed like he had kind of trouble f finding where he was supposed to be at, at times tonight. What did you kind of see from Bryce? Yeah, I saw that same thing. And now, you know, a lot of it for him and John Michael, a lot of our conversation in the spring and summer was, hey, we're going to try to help you relieve some of this pressure of making all the decisions and playing kind of like you got to run the team. And you know, we recruited a couple guys to do that for him, and both of them are out right now. So they're back to kind of balancing what they do naturally best, which is score, make shots, with also trying to run a team with a bunch of new guys who they don't really know. As much as we've been together, it's still different when you when you get five guys out there in a game in a competitive environment. So um, those kind of guys I don't worry about much. You know, over, over the course of the next week, a couple of weeks at worst, they'll figure out where they fit and how to go. And then obviously once we get those other guys back, I liken Mike Marsh to the guys about he's the guy in the YMCA who's not overwhelmingly athletic but just getting buckets. What would you kind of see from from Mike? Yeah, I mean, he's got a plan. Like, he's, you know, that's, that's, this is my favorite saying about vets. Mike ain't guessing. He knows what he wants to do. Whether it works or not is something else, but he has a plan. You know, our young guys are guessing all the time. They, they're just trying stuff. They're hoping it works, you know. Um, Justin did the, you know, Try back to half court before the ball hits the rim on his first three. And I'm like, no, bro, you're not that good yet. <laughs> like, don't do that. <laughs> like, learn how to make him first. This Mike knows what he wants to do. He's going to get to a spot. He's going to play with great force, and he's going to have some physicality about him. I think before Justin's last three, all of his points had come at the rim. Was there? Was he doing something to, to keep finding the ball in his hands under the rim? What was he doing? Uh, he's just playing hard. You know, we talk about with those young guys going in, you know, because they, because they're good kids and want to please each other. They want to do well. They want to be a part of winning. They, they 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 also had some nerves coming into today, and I try to encourage them to kind of just get lost in the game. You know, cut, move the ball, <clears throat> dive on the loose ball, get an offensive rebound. And him and Daly pretty much did that. Pretty consistently throughout. They were talking about how with this team, you know, seniors and upperclassmen listen to the freshmen with ideas, with things to do, and vice versa. Do you feel like the the freshmen are having to like, prove themselves, or do you feel like they're being listened to and, and they're they're all on one team, they all have one goal? Yeah, I mean, there's all always an element of um, of earning kind of your voice within the team, just because to give any have any credibility, you got to know what you're talking about. You know, it's not just kind of spout anything. It's 
it needs to make sense. It needs to be productive. Uh, it needs to be something that leads to our team having success. So um, they've come a long way since they stepped on campus in June, and, and many of them have earned an opportunity to speak up when they see things out there, and that will continue as we go along. Mark, you guys have seven newcomers to play tonight. Um, a 68 combined from them, 55 from the freshmen. After tonight, I mean, I know it's only an exhibition, but do you have any gauge about the team early on? That's way too early. I mean, not really. I mean, we'll, we, I probably won't honestly be able to answer that for another probably month, I would think. You know, we need to play some, play some different environments, you know, play some different styles, because that's a part of it, right? It's, okay, so you can beat Oklahoma Baptist at home by 35 or whatever it is. What does that mean in the big picture? Does that translate to, you know, a game against Creighton at the end of the month? Does that translate against, you know, Baylor at home in the first of January? I, I don't know if that this does that, but I know tonight we had an opportunity to get better, and I feel like we used most of tonight's game getting better. You know, getting Connor Dow comfortable with shooting the ball in this arena with people in the building. That was really good to see. Um, and like I said, Garrison had had some up and down moments. I uh, wish I would have been able to get Zay in there a little bit more, but he got banged in his hip pretty good there early. Uh, and he, if it was Monday, he would have been, he would have been out back out there, uh, but it was no need to really push it tonight. It was pretty sore, so just kind of held him. Uh, so to answer your question, I don't know if we know more about ourselves tonight as much as I think our guys have a little bit more comfort with playing out there together. I'm at, I'm at Good. Eric did everything, a little bit of everything tonight. What, is, what about his versatility has stood out both tonight, but just since he arrived here? Yeah, so, you know, if you, if you think you've followed our, us for a while, Eric's and Justin, in many regards, are like the, the guy we've been missing. Um, the guy that everybody in the league's had from a skilled forward spot. You know, think about Kevin O'Banner or Jalen Bridges or Jalen Hill or you know, everybody in the league's got somebody at the four spot, almost in particular Keontae Johnson, right, that can post up, can make a three, can rebound and push, can be a defensive matchup challenge. But we, we haven't had that, not in a consistent manner. Um, and so those guys, both, and Eric in particular, bring a, a, a level of versatility at the four that you know, we really haven't had since we were moving Cade everywhere around the court three years ago. Yeah, and it seems like when he gets downhill, that's when he's – really effective. Just what about that stood out to you? Yeah, he, he knows kind of what he should be looking for now. You know, early on, like I said, it was really just hoping it worked as he got in there, but now he's got an idea how to kick it out. He's a, he's a willing passer, uh, very unselfish, um, but he's naturally got the ability to get buckets and you know, we'll need him to throughout the year. So really, all the bigs were really good tonight, and I thought really, you know, dominated down the road, rolling in. But typically, Brandon Garrison with five blocks, you know, what do you think he's going to bring to the table all year in terms of down low and offense and defense? Yeah, we'll need it. Um, uh, we, we continue to encourage him to be more of a force inside. Um, he's not the bouncy athlete that Miranda is or even Cissé was, you know, but he's got more stability in his legs and force to hold his ground. Um, and obviously he does a pretty good job of timing shots. And that's a skill that you know we didn't necessarily teach him, but showed him how to use at this level. I imagine Hicklin's not gonna go one for seven every night, but what, what you think your three point shooting? I thought it was good. Yeah, you know, Again, for me, it's not necessarily about the, I mean, obviously we wanna make them, but then we take the right ones, or the right guys taking them. I thought him and John Mike got good looks. Tonight they didn't go down. If he gets those same seven shots on Monday, I want him to take them all. I think he'd make four or five of them, you know, so. It's got to encourage him to, to be continue to shoot with confidence. Um, he, he's not worried. That's that's what was it's good about him being an older guy. A freshman may look at that and start to question, uh, but an older guy who's been around as much as he has, he, he'll be back in the gym tomorrow, and, and I know he'll be ready the next time he gets those shots. I know you aim for seventy five percent from the line. Is there like a percentage that you're after for for three point shots? What? Uh, we want to be in like the thirty seven five to forty range. And obviously, you, you got to talk about the right guys taking them. It's no different than free throws, actually. You know, the right guys got to take the shots. Guys who make free throws got to get to the line for you so you can have a good percentage uh, as a team. But the same thing from three. You expect Javon or Jamire, and any updates on those two for Monday? <laughs> Not anything new. Uh, they both went through shoot around and warm ups today, uh, which was encouraging. Uh, I'll get a report on them tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if I've talked to you guys before, but I'm sure we'll get something out before Monday's game about whether they'll go.
I'm pretty confident that uh, Keller won't. He's got another follow-up with a doctor before he does. Uh, Small doesn't. He's done with his follow-ups uh, from a doctor's standpoint. So uh, it's probably more likely a chance that he would be available than, than Keller, but I wouldn't commit to either one of them right now. You mentioned to us you know, earlier this week how you thought that he, either we did, we would see Miranda at the top of some zones, mm -hmm. and then he only got there for a minute, but we saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you plan on doing like a lot this season, or kind of just testing it out and then buying it every time? Don't know. Uh, again, it's one of those things kind of to like be no more. I don't know. We need to see it. I need to see it against multiple different teams, maybe a team that really can drive it or really screens it or really shoots it. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that happens is you don't really see a 7-1 person at the top of a zone very often. Psychologically, it kind of, as a point guard, even as somebody who played the position, I would look at that and be like, that's kind of strange. What do we do here for a few seconds? And hopefully I'll be smart enough to figure it out, but at least can give you a different dynamic than what people are used to. I don't even see too many 7-1 people anywhere on the court, especially at the top of the point. Yeah. What's your relationship with the uh, Oklahoma Baptist coach? He was talking highly of you and y'all's you know, relationship over the years and you know, your recruitment of Jarius and, and just, you know, what's y'all's connection? Yeah, so Coach Edgar worked for uh, Coach Hoffman at Mercer when I was an assistant in the Southeast for so many years. So we would cross paths in Atlanta at an event or on the road in a tournament or something like that. We never really actually, we never really coached against each other. We never coached against Mercer, but um, so we, you just get to know people. Uh, and then he got the job here not long after I got the job here. And um, I didn't even know when he had Jarius that, that time, you know, but obviously when we recruited Jarius, he was somebody we talked to about, you know, the thought of him transitioning to this level. He was, he was as complimentary of Jarius as I've ever heard a coach of a player in terms of not his talent, but his capacity to be coached at a high level. And he, he kept saying, hey, the more you can give him, the better he'll be for you. You know, don't just accept that he's just going to be a shooter or whatever. Like, make him lead, make him handle the ball, make him defend. And, you know, I've seen some of that. Uh, but Jason's a great guy. Uh, obviously, he's done a really good job with that program. They're young right now, younger than they've probably been the last couple of years. But they'll be fine. Thanks, everybody. Good.